Now we would like to take uh, Dr. Uh, Joy Nunye on Zoom. She will be joining us from Port Harcourt, from Government of Port Harcourt on Zoom. Dr. Joy Nunye, she's the immediate past acting managing director of uh, Niger Delta Development Commission. Doctor? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, before we proceed, um, we would like to put you on oath, um, yeah. if you don't mind. Secretary, please, oath. Oath, and as I. I, when I Dr. Joy Nguyen. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Affirm that the evidence. And I affirm that the evidence that I shall give. Before this honorable committee before this honorable committee shall be the truth shall be the truth the whole truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth so help me God so help me God thank you very much uh, I asked a question can you introduce yourself yeah yeah, yeah so I, I just wanted to thank God Almighty thank the governor of River State yes, and we came for coming to save my life yesterday and of course the good people of River State. Um, my name is Bene Dr. Joy Nunye. Bene in the sense that I hold the highest title, traditional title of honor in my native Bogodi land, the sixth woman since 1500 BC. Um, I am a lawyer, a politician, and I have come here today and I'm going to speak as the former MDCEO of the NDDC. And I believe that's the reason why I'm here today and why you have invited me. Okay. Thank you very much. Can we have your... Unfortunately, unfortunately, um, most of the documents that I was bringing to you had already... Uh, in Abuja already, I was supposed to just pick them up and come to you, so they will still bring them over to you today. Um, most of my documents are not here, and of course you saw what happened yesterday, it was all about documents, and um, all of that. I'd like to say, um, I would go through, since I'm on that route, everything that I've said would be the truth and nothing but the truth. Okay. Although I have some old drafts that I had made, I would sort of use it as a guide because I've sent in my submissions ahead, so I don't really have anything. I just have, which will just be a guide anyway. I'll just sort of like go through it, but all my documents will be submitted to you. You can go ahead, please. Uh, yes. Okay, so I was appointed um, as MD um, on the 28th of um, October, 2019, and um, we had the inauguration done at the office of the minister. On our way there, and I've said this on TV, since I'm on that route, I think I need to say it one more time. On our way to my inauguration, the minister said, Madam MD, congratulations. I hope that you know that the pen with which I have signed your letter. Sorry, can we know the, can you be specific? Which minister, please? Senator God's will above you. Senator God's will above you. I drove with him in his car to the inauguration venue, which was his boardroom in the Federal Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. He went further to say that I should know, I should tell him how many of my aid that I would give him. He wants at least 10 of those eight. I was worried in my spirit. And he said that he stopped the Bernard Okumagba board because he had asked Bernard Okumagba to give him some aid, to ask him for about 10, and that Bernard Okumagba told him that he would reach him. I think we can confirm and maybe look for Bernard Okumagba if that happened, but that was what he told me. So I got a bit worried. And he said, how many will I give him? I said, I don't even know how many aids I'm entitled to. He said, once I get there, the first thing that you do is to change the dollars. 
have seen is um, um, the press release where he says about the dollars, people know how the money of NDDC is moved. I was specific in my allegations. I said that he asked me to change dollars. What I should be hearing is that at no point did I tell the former MD to do that. He has not denied that. Now, what happened when the new MD came? From your records which you have, dollars were immediately changed when he became MD. I want to tell Nigerians that I did not change one dollar of the people's money. The dollar was intact before I left. I did not spend one dollar of Niger Delta people's money. Secondly, when we got to uh, um, Port Harcourt, no, he told me that he would come. He came to Port Harcourt two days after our inauguration. He stayed at the Meridian Hotel. That was his first meeting with members of the IMC. Namely, Dr. Cairo Jibo, the late EDFA, which I will not be talking about uh, much. Let me respect his soul, but I will make small, a little bit of references where necessary. The late EDFA and the only other staff of the NPDC that was there was one Mr. Etiebe who later became the head of the procurement unit. At that meeting, he reminded me about the dollar. Secondly, he told me that he wanted me to send some staff away. They were the ones that spoiled Mrs. Akwagaga that refused to sign and make certain payments. He does not want them to spoil me, spoil me, please work. Thirdly, he said the first thing I would do is to write a letter to him. He gave me the draft, which I'd sent, of course, I showed it on TV the other day, that I should put it on my letterhead. In that letter, I was supposed to be writing that most of the companies that, of course, they had sent up to me those files, that Mr. Um, Senator Wambushi owns the 98 companies. Questions have been asked, and I've seen um, one of the um, documents and position of one, a certain Don Kubara, who says that um, I'm now defending Senator Wambushi. I never, ever told the world that Senator Wambushi was the senator that uh, took was collecting the one billion. The issue of the one billion was different. I said, how can an individual be collecting one billion every month? Had nothing to do with it. The case of Senator Mokushi was the issue of the 98 files, which I was supposed to be writing. And I said, that I will not be able to write this. As a lawyer, he who alleges must be. I will not write any document that I cannot sign. And besides, when Mr. President sees my letter, he will believe every word of that letter. So I am not going to. Why? Because I do not know if Senator Wabushi owns that company. And he said, you do you also had held meetings Who is in you? On those days. Sorry, can you be specific? The chairman, and that was the point of rejecting you yesterday, that you had held meetings um, against him in um, Undo. Both of you refused for, you wrote the letters, which I had. And because I had seen the letters written from the Senate committee and the House committee, on the payment for distilling, and I'd already also seen your letters for, to the MD of NDDC not to change the dollars and not to make the payment. I assume, Chairman, you might remember that there was such a letter that both of you, I don't know if I'm correct. Yes. Both of you had written to the MD not to write. So 
based on the letter that I had seen, as soon as I came in, I asked if there was anything that would stop me from changing the dollars. I asked from the account department and I got a copy of the letters that both of you had written to say that they should not, that we at NTDC should not change the dollars. I think what had happened was that Ms. Dakwagaga had come to you, who is my predecessor, had come to you because she did not want to change the dollars. The next thing that he said was about Mr. Kaltungo, which I alleged. I'm under oath. He said that Mr. Kaltungo had become very powerful at NDDTC. At that time, he did not know that Mr. Kaltungo was my classmate in law school, because that was like two, three days after I was appointed. He said, we, should, we cannot allow Mr. Kaltungo, a northerner, to head one of the most sensitive positions in NTD. I told him at that meeting, that sir, I cannot be the one to fight this battle, number one. The only northerner in NDDC, the first thing I would do is to go and remove him. He has not committed any crime. I will not be able to fight it. He said that, is there any northerner, um, any uh, southerner at the Northeast Development Commission? I said that me, I'm not going to go into this sort of big battle or going to fight a northerner. And then at that meeting, I then declared that Mr. Kautungo is my classmate at the Nigerian Law School. And we were called to bar the same day. It will be wicked of me to make him my first victim when there is no report against him. So, sir, I will not be able to do it. He gave me the list of directors that I should change, include uh, I should redeploy, or and, and some of them were not just for redeployment. They were for, I should use the forensic audit that we were supposed to be do, um, supervising as an excuse to send them on leave and retirement because he said they could influence it. For example, Mrs. Dakwagaga had appealed to me that she wanted to remain in the head office. She was, a, she was a director who was just acting as an MD. And I had no reason not to leave her. So I appealed to him that the lady is in nice. Please, let us just leave her instead of sending her again to Benin. Because she told me at the time that her, she was from Bayelsa State and she's nearly due for retirement. So she doesn't want to go back to her station. He said I should send her to Kodumbo State. My conscience really bothered me. When I went back to do the redeployment, I sent her back to her station because I did not want the minister to be upset. The other director, like Linus, who was the, e, um, the, um, the uh, director of finance and uh, administration, the TFA, I left um, finance and accounts. I left him, um, I took him then to budget brought Mr. Anthel to finance. Now, he was very upset that I did not do the list that he said. On that list, most of them were actually from a quite long state. I said, sir, I'm a river swimmer. There's no way that I'll promote all the younger um, people that are not up to director level. I represent river state. None of, I will now start moving people out. I'm not going to do that. I won't be able to do double promotion. Once I have the power to act at the board, only the board can have such powers to promote people. Two, so where there's no board, the chairman of the Civil Service Commission by act is supposed to be the one to promote. It's to a standard. The other thing was for employment. Of course, they had collected CVs from all Thanks of God, I also said that I'm from the Niger Delta. And all of you remember that before I came, 
there was the issue of employment where the Federal Character Commission had given NDDC the approval for employment. But that was stopped because of the scandal that was going on. I said, sir, there's no way I have been an activist in the Niger Delta. I gave up my youth for activism. It's written in books. So I will not be the one to come to NDDC and then give employment to people outside our zone when our youth don't have employment. So I never, I want to tell the world, I never did any employment. I never gave out a, a single contract at the NDDC. I never gave out a single contract. I remained silent after six, nearly seven months of my removal, I think about five, six months of me removed as MD, because contrary to what is said, it's because I'm annoyed that they removed me. Am I annoyed? I'm, I'm not just annoyed, I am livid, especially when I heard the reason for my removal. And I'm so happy, I want to thank Senator Fabio for giving me a good testimony that I am not corrupt. There's nobody can say, no contractor can sit anywhere and say they gave me 10 naira. I want to say this also on that oath. The contractors, most of them, 60 personally known to me, personally, and I can say before the world, that I am the most unpopular MD ever that came to NGDC. When I was removed, the minister, Senator Akwabio, personally sent out text message and video recording of the youth say, make she go, make she go, she no agree give us money. That was a testimonial that the money of the people of the Niger Delta is blood money. I refuse to touch it. So even when my friends were contractors, even when they claimed that their monies were being owed, I hardened my hands. My instruction was everybody go and finish your job. Now, everybody will bear me testimony that contractors went back to site. Everybody saw contractors go back to site. I was empty. I had the privilege of seeing all the videos. One job, five people will send me videos of completion. The same job, the same video, and I will just laugh. The problem that we are, you are investigating today have three major groups that are responsible for the things that have gone on in the entities. One group is the management, which is the IMC. Everybody against the IMC. The second group is the staff of NDDC. And the third group, which I will start with, is the people of the Niger Delta. This story that we're all calling embarrassing cannot be complete without saying that the people of the Niger Delta region are responsible for what has happened and the fraud and corruption that has taken place in NDDC. Why do I say that? I'm speaking from personal experience as one who has been with NDDC. As soon as an MD is appointed, people begin to rejoice and celebrate, not because they want you to do the right thing, not because they're interested in the development of the Niger Delta. They believe that it is now their turn to eat out of the national cake. So what you hear, what did she do for you? What did you do for me? She didn't give me money. You didn't give me a contract. They are not interested in anything. All they wanted were like palliatives. That is why for those who didn't harden their hearts like me, they fell for this palliative matter. They started giving out. But I was strong because I always remember the case of Ghani Fawemi. Ghani Fawemi fought for the masses of this country. When he, he said he wanted to contest an election, they were not there. Okay. So I remember that I needed to stand properly so that I can raise my name in gold. Uh, Dr. Joy Mine. The second class is the staff. Doctor. The staff of NDDC are from the Niger Delta region. The contracts that have been awarded 
are from their communities. When I was appointed, I went from office to office. I met, I sat in their offices, I told them, you people are responsible for what has gone wrong in this zone. All the staff have in their wards or in their local government projects. If every staff of NDDC takes up the project in their local government, ensures that they're well done, we will not have these issues. Thirdly, the IMC. In my experience, which I want to talk about, for the first time in the history of NDDC, no palliatives were given. I did not give out Christmas palliatives. I was under pressure to bring 10 billion, 1 billion per state. I refused. The youths were calling me, Madam, things are very difficult. Things are very difficult. I said, the day I give you people this money, you know I have started collecting your money. I never gave any Christmas bonus palliative during my time. For the first time in the history of NDDC, NDDC worked throughout December. There was no break except on public holidays. One of the things I also ensured is that the youth went back to the communities to walk through the CDC. When I was MD, nobody saw any youth hanging outside the gate of NDDC. No youth stayed outside the gate. Because we were trying to ensure that the youth go back to work. Uh, do now, doctor, doctor, can you... Can you hear me, please? Yes. Yeah. Um, I will want us to address issues, if you don't, uh, if you don't mind. The, can you tell this honourable committee how much you spent in um, during your time yes. as managing director? During my time, yes. I spent eight billion naira. Eight billion. Eight billion, partly for the um, permanent site of the. Um, NDDC headquarters. We are spent for the two bridges in Anthony. I'm not from Anthony, but when I went to Anthony, I've also sent the videos so to the, you. The, 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 eight, myself, the eight billion was from when to when? Um, it's all in the records that you have. It's eight billion throughout my tenure. Total of okay, my tenure spending. That's, spending. that's, that's what I'm from you. October ending to February. Yes. 17th. Okay. October 29th yes. to February 17th. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then the two bridges in Anthony. There is this talk about Lassa Fiba Kit. I want to say there's nothing called Lassa Fiba Kit. It's the PPE that we have this N95 now. It's for infectious diseases. But of course, they were brought in during the Lassa fever outbreak. So when I keep hearing Lassa fever, Lassa fever kit, there's nothing like Lassa fever kit. I've also sent in the video of our visit to the warehouse with the television stations like Channels, uh, AI, Doctor, uh, Doctor Joy, um, I would like you to, I would like to ask about the forensic. You were brought yes. in by the president precisely to conduct the forensic exercise. Um, of NDDC activities between year 2000 to 2019. Can you tell us um, how the, pro uh, the process that, that um, took place in the procurement of the lead consultant and the status of the forensic as at when you left? Okay. First, I'd like to just remind you that the president had written a letter to the National Assembly appointing the forensic and suspending the appointment of the board, the uh, Bernard Okumagbaleko. And in that letter, which I've also, you have it anyway, um, the president said that he was appointing the IMC to supervise the forensic audit. That was the reason that he was bringing in the, um, the IMC. Now, what happened, what I met, wasn't exactly what was going on. The minister, uh, the minister Akabio, insisted that he will supervise the forensic audit. I reminded him and showed him.
the letter that the president had written. There's no way that we can send the money that is in our budget. Number one, he requested that the president, in his memo to the president, he requested that the money for the funding of the forensic audit be gotten from the service white books. Mr. President, in his wisdom, refused that request and in writing said that it should be from the NDDC um, um, appropriation. It should be put in the NDDC budget. Therefore, making NDDC the procuring entity. Now, that, Mr. Chairman, sir, can I continue? Please continue, please. Okay. That made NDDC the procuring entity. And I said that to, to take the money, send it to the ministry, would be like the Federal Ministry of Health asking the, a, a, a federal medical center that they would like to implement what is in the budget. So I found that very difficult. Now, going to the audit itself, when I was there, I was the one who prepared all the documents for the um, forensic audit, sent in the applications. What Mr. Akwabio did in his bid to take over, he erroneously made Technical system. Look at him. Sorry. But they did not go on with it because oh, most of the uh, documents that Dr. should have shown Dr. Joy did Nine. not go. If you don't mind, uh, we lost you for, um, for, a, for a few seconds. We got it to the point that you prepared the document for the forensic. Yes. Okay. I okay. prepared the document for the and, 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 and this is very important, Chairman. If you let me speak through it, you get a, a better picture. Be yes, you to respond. No, it's from there. From her. From her side. Mm -hmm. so, sorry, honorable members, because we are on video, that's why I'm asking for questions. That's why I'm asking. What's up there? It's from her there. She's back, John. Okay. Um, the volume, please. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So, what did we do? After that argument, I now came up to... No, it's from her. It's from her, not Five years imprisonment without an option to find. And it says that, that if uh, I so delegate, I will be responsible to five years imprisonment. So I insisted that I will ensure that everything that is done will be in accordance with the Act. The first thing I did there for us to go through the procurement. Now, we did, we just, we went there and we... Uh-oh. This is, I think we're having challenges. It's from her. So, is this the, eh? Doctor, so any forensic... Okay. If they had carried out any forensic audit. Sorry, can you can you come again? Because the network was a bit bad. Sorry. Again. Yeah, you're talking about the point of procurement from procurement. Yes. 
the procurement, uh, the procurement, um, of the procurement of the the, um, the lead consultant. Many people have clearly misunderstood the procurement of the lead consultant. Now, because I did not want any illegality and I did not want the forensic audit to be discredited. I ensured with the help of real big consultants to help me come up with the terms of reference for these auditors. The lead consultant everyone is talking about is not the forensic auditor. He does not have a lot. Only the other forensic auditors, I'm just taking through so that you can understand yourself. The role of the lead consultant is to gather when all the forensic auditors have gotten all the data and all the reports from field, they will put it together and then give it to the lead consultant who will do the reporting, the conclusion, you know, putting it together. That's just his role. He is not the one going to carry out any forensic audit. Now, let me look at the case of the forensic auditor. This Bashir and Co., I'm sure they met up with all their taxes and all, but I do not know if they have ever carried out a forensic audit. So I will be asking to tell them to give you evidence that they have ever carried out a forensic audit before in accordance with the provisions of the Public Procurement Act, which requires that for any consultant contractor, they must show evidence that in the past three years or thereabout, they have carried out that. Second issue with the lead consultant. In our document, which is with the BPP, we said that within 90 days of their re receiving um, reports, from the, um, the um, forensic auditors, then they would now come up with a report. So as far as I'm concerned, they cannot have any report. Now, have they been procured themselves, mm -hmm. the lead consultant? Can I now stand before this committee to say that the lead consultant has been procured? My answer would be no, why not? It is true that and uh, a certificate, a due process certificate of no objection was indeed given to the NDDC for the procurement of the lead consultant. However, and I believe, which I would ask, that the BPP has stated clearly that it was based, and the certificate shows, which I have sent to you, of course, that certificate of the, that due process certificate of no objection says source of funding. You remember that you cannot give any approval, you cannot procure any consultant where the National Assembly, it is a criminal offense to procure any consultant without the appropriation made by the National Assembly. In this case, because it will be uh, anticipatory budgeting, in this case, has the National Assembly appropriated funds as stated on the due process, uh, uh, due process certificate of no objection for 2020 budget? There is no appropriation. The 2020 budget has not even been considered, it has not even been discussed, not to mention being passed. Now, when I said in my press briefing that the 2020 budget had not been passed, they ran before you people on Friday or Monday sometime, some days ago, and they could not defend the budget. Therefore, the world will agree with me that the 2020 budget is not passed. Secondly, though they do have an approval, and that is why I said I refused to go before fake, which is one of the issues of insubordination, because the act says that if I commit any offense, five years imprisonment without an option of fine. So in going to FEC, it will mean that I intentionally went there to obtain an approval under false pretenses, knowing that the 2020 budget 
had not been passed, and also knowing that it was criminal and anticipatory, which I want to say was one of the reasons why Obasanjo got the procurement, Public Procurement Act enacted. Now, in getting that, that Public Procurement Act, the World Bank consultants who did that, who came and came up with a report on fraud, which is part of this, on procurement, procurement activity. In their report, they stated that out of every 100 cover that the federal government lost in, 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 lost in corruption, 60% and 60 cover was from procurement fraud. They therefore asked that immediately the National Assembly must enact a procurement um, act. And there was no statute for that before now. So now that is your own act, an act of the National Assembly. So we must ensure that that act is being implemented properly to help us check the fraud in Nigeria. Therefore, it is right that we get the, um, the National Procurement Council established immediately to be chaired by the Minister of Finance, the Minister of, um, of, um, the, the Minister of um, Justice, and Attorney General, is also a member, the MPA, there's a list in the Procurement Act. That is what will give credit. Now, let me tell you what would have happened if the National Procurement Council is there. In going to apply for an approval for the procurement of the lead council, they would have found out that it was wrong because it was clearly stated that it should be from the 2020 mm. budget. Now, that approval cannot be applied until the 2020 budget is passed. Therefore, that, that position of the um, um, lead council is a nullity by law. So okay. there is no lead council as far as we're concerned because that contract doesn't exist until the 2020. However, they have said that they have paid the lead consultant. And in paying that lead consultant, my own recommendation would be that he returns the money until the budget has been passed and he has shown evidence. Okay, that uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Dr. Nene. The second, no, 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 Mr. Chairman, the issue is that everybody in Nigeria has been deceived that the procurement is going on. Now, it's very, um, that the um, forensic audit is going on. It's a major issue. I want to say here, and I'm ready to stand and tell all Nigerians, if they find out that the forensic audit is going on, every testimony an allegation that I have made should be, should be cancelled or disregarded. There is no forensic audit going on. Why? Very recently, and I've submitted that to you, and I think DPP has come to testify, they got a certificate of no objection for the procurement of the forensic auditors. These forensic auditors are the ones that are supposed to be carrying out the forensic audit. In that list, there is no auditing firm in Nigeria that is of big repute that is there. The list, the names of those on that list are the, the following. One minute. Because this is in the, the document that I've sent to Abuja, I had to tell them to please help me check um, and get the list of that. The companies, the nine companies on that list are Emma and Young, Emma and Young, GE Osage and Co, Sony Oko and Co, Abuchi EO Ebuchi and Co, Alliance Consulting and Digital Solutions, Gada Idris and Co, E Field Associates. Associate Services, eight, Discovery Cycle Professional, nine, BBC Professional. None of our major auditing firms in Nigeria is on that list. Yet we have been told several times that internationally reputable these are on that list. There's none. That is one. Two, can I say that the forensic auditors have been um, procured? My answer is no. Getting that 
um, certificate of no objection. It's highly defective. The certificate itself, I will, I will cancel it right away. In the source of funding, BPP failed, refused, and neglected to state the appropriation where the funding of these um, forensic auditors will be gotten from. So they, 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 they did not say which budget. What you see on that um, um, certificate of no objection is the amount, the cost. Where they're getting it from is not there. However, let us assume that they just put the amount. The next question would be, has it been approved by the Federal Executive Council? No, it hasn't. Does NDDC have an existing budget? No, they don't. Their budget elapsed, I think, 31st of May or thereabouts. I'm not sure which time it expired. But right now, there's no budget. So these forensic auditors have not been procured. Therefore, I challenge Senator Fabio because he has sold a dummy to Nigeria that everybody, including members of the National Assembly, are afraid, and they are the ones pushing me to say that they are afraid of the forensic audits going on. I challenge him to bring any of these nine forensic auditors that have been approved by the Federal Executive Council. He said on television that um, he has stepped down his memo. Even last week, he stepped down his memo. That was the memo that was supposed to be for the procurement of the um, forensic auditors. So if you have not gotten your approval. You have not written to, to the, uh, you have not appointed them officially. Where then is the forensic audit going? Why are we as a country being deceived? I challenge him to bring one of these Imanko, Oko Nanko, to come and say that they are indeed carrying out a forensic. And this is the greatest scam in this country. Uh, Honorable Nigerian Dr. Actually Joy, that the forensic audit is going on. Dr. Joy, uh, yes, from sir. some of the submissions we had, um, I think the sum. I want to say also that they have not asked for the letter from the Auditor General, which is a requirement, a constitutional requirement, yeah. that they must ask. The, uh, the Auditor General for the list of auditors. Did they get these names from the auditors for such a credible forensic audit that is everything for the President? This is a legacy project for Mr. President in his anti-corruption work. Okay, uh, Dr. Joy, may I ask you this question um, yes. about the forensic? From one of our submissions we had earlier, uh, we learned that the sum of 641 million era was used by the NDDC for media support for the forensic uh, across the United States of the Niger Delta. So, which was um, paid to Clearpoint Communications Limited. Are you aware okay, of this? I don't know. I don't think that the forensic audits to clear points. I don't know clear No, no. I said, I said media support, contract for media support for the forensic audits. Okay. That, is, that wasn't in my time. Okay. No. I don't know anything about clear points. I don't know anybody. Okay. The only thing that I paid for during my time was directly to Vanguard, um, to this day and all the national dailies. We paid directly to them, NTA, and all of that. And I want to say, part of the things that against me for his subordination was that I refused to carry out a verification exercise in the ninth state. All Nigerian contractors will bear me witness that the verification exercises took place in the ninth Niger Delta states. I did not need to give anybody 600 and something million naira for anything. The, the verification exercises took place. Now, the chairman of that, this is important, the chairman, I appointed and inaugurated the, um, the project verification um, committee. In that, in the memo against me, it is said that I chose to set up a committee made up of nearly 100 people. Yes, we did. We sent them to different states, our uh, staff. 
to go and carry out the rules. The chairman of that committee was Dr. Kairi. He had nominated Mr. Eyoite as one of the nominees, um, one of his nominees on the um, committee. And I said, you can't. Because Mr. Eyoite cannot be a judge in his own case, even though the minister asked you to put him on. Why? Because he was the one responsible for emergency contract awards. And so we could not send him. There's a letter which I've also sent to you on that that was sent to him. This verification exercise, the next day, Dr. Cairo never participated in that exercise. When they came back, they wanted to give a special verification to some contractors who refused. And this is important, sir. In your investigation of this um, corruption going on in NGDC, this might help you. What did we find out in that, um, in that um, exercise? One, contracts were given out to some companies that were not registered. Some companies got registered after they were awarded the contract. Two, in some cases, contracts were um, give, awarded before the designs were given. So you found out that most of the projects were abandoned, which is like what you have in Port Harcourt, at the old Port Harcourt General Hospital that is near the Civic Center. You see a big building there, and the contractor says he couldn't finish it because by the time the design came out, he couldn't do. How do you give a contract awarded without a design? And the most notorious one was that during that exercise, we saw like there were situations where you had 10 to 15 companies having IPCs for the same project. So road Peter on street five, two kilometers. There will be 15 companies that have been awarded that same contract. How do you, how do you afford that? So those are the issues that we need to look at. Those are the contracts that we look. So when you say, these, these contracts were given. Now, I want to say something. Files got missing. Files got missing when we started this verification. I had sent out a memo that no files should be taken out of the commission. You'll be glad to hear, sir, that as soon as I sent out that memo, files were taken out by the EDP and the EDF. No, doc, Dr. Joy, Dr. Joy, please. Yes. You, you, the issue of the file you raised now is a key issue. Uh, you, yes. Because of our time, you said files were missing. I mean, they, yes. so they took files or something. Yes. Can you I want to say that if you look at the, the um, um, Nigeria Criminal Code Act, that the government, um, all those documents, when you steal the government's document, it is a criminal offense. So those files were taken. And at that peace meeting that I've been talking about, I raised the issue of the missing file. And I confronted Mr. Akbabio that you'd collected files, you told the EDF and EDP to take out these files at the weekend. I am assuming that these files are for contracts that when he was governor, when he was senator, and of course the 30, the 30 contracts that he was awarded in the Stilton and Water High Center. Then he became the minister. Sorry, who awarded, who awarded the 30 contracts? You spoke about 30 contracts now. It so was who? Chief Sese, who was in charge. It's for what I sent and the student, okay. which is why you, 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 sir, you were part of those that asked for that thing not to be paid. Th thank so you. So you know about it. Um, because the document was on my table, and I can tell you, sir, that you saved Mr. Aqua, Mrs. Akwagaga from making payment. What is this distilting about? Distilting is moving sand inside the water. Does it make sense? If you push the sand, the water will bring it back. Is that what you give a contract for? <laughs> so he was awarded 30 of those contracts. Upon how, how much was, was the average cost of a distill of um, each of the contracts? Um, I, I'm under oath. I don't want to say what I'm not sure of specifically. Okay. Um, Dr. Records Dr. Joy. And those files, those files, <clears throat> Mr. Fabio admitted that he had called them to return the files. 
When I came back, I've also sent you the letter that I wrote to the two directors, um, executive directors, to return those files. It's a criminal offense to have collected those files. And before I go, when I refused to do a lot of things, I have no reason to start looking for blood money because my last child is in final year law. I've got four children. I just wanted to write my name in diamonds. So when I refused to, Senator Fabio says I have poverty mentality. How can I have poverty mentality? My father is Senator Nunez, Senator Nunez. Why would I have poverty mentality? Even on my own, I think I've tried. I refused. He said the only condition for us to work together, if not, he was going to remove me was if I um, take the oath, go with him to Uyo to take the oath. It's very important because if I allege on television, and I don't say this because it is in course of my work. So calling me a criminal, I did this, doesn't mean anything. It is criminal under a criminal code act for you to even suggest or force me to try to take an oath. It's seven years imprisonment. Me, I'm calling on the police to investigate that. Calling me when I refuse to take that oath, and I, I need to repeat this under oath. At the meeting in the villa, before Mr. Sarki Abba, who is the SA domestic to Mr. President, and Alaji Mekam, is the AO of the villa. Aquabio asked me to take an oath if we wanted to reconcile. Fortunately, I had not told these people about him telling me three times before. He was the one that now brought it up. And let me say this, the reason why he has been unable to write on any paper that he never told me to take any oath is because the two gentlemen are credible people in society. If it were some people, they would have held a press conference that it never happened. But till today, none of them have ever denied that it didn't happen. Okay, so, Do Dr. Joy. Uh, no, yeah. sir, the old issue is, 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 is criminal and it's very important. It's very important, sir. We cannot, it's a criminal offense because if I had taken that oath under the Nigerian Criminal Code Act, it would have been life imprisonment for Senator Akpabi. Now that I didn't take the oath, it is, I think, about five or seven years imprisonment for even telling me to take the oath. If I had taken the oath, I would have gone, I think, about 19 years if I had taken that oath. The only excuse that the Criminal Code Act says is if within two months of taking that oath, I swear to an affidavit that I, um, I, I was forced under, I, was, uh, I took that oath under duress. So me, I'm calling on the Nigerian police to please investigate and charge Senator Akpabio in accordance with the provisions of the Criminal Code Act. One, for stealing the files of the NDDC for the businesses that and contracts that he has not executed. Two, for telling me to take that oath. Three, I have and have submitted to you the text message that he sent to me from his mobile phone saying that I'm Ogoni and that my people have not allowed um, them to take oil. And he said, one Mr. Etu, who he wanted me to appoint, and I refused to be my SAU. She sent it to him, and he said in his words, he who lives by the gun shall die by the gun. Now, in the Nigerian Criminal Code Act, it says any threat on a traditional chief. I am a traditional chief. I hold the highest title of honor in my native Ogoni land, Benin. He said any threat on me and my people, life imprisonment. I want the Nigerian police to also take this up 
for threatening me. I've also submitted to you, and I'm hoping that today okay. I will send in my own petition to the Nigerian police. Board. Okay, Dr. Joy. Uh, that, yeah. Dr. Joy, can you yes, some few questions, please? Can you yes. confirm to Nigerians? Can you confirm to this honourable committee that in your tenure you spent only eight billion naira, as you said? Because yes. from the Central Bank of Nigeria statement and the statement yes. from the Akatan General of the Federation, what we yes. have um, as expenditure till date from um, your time as IMC is 81.5 billion. So are you saying of this 81.5 billion naira, or 8 billion was what you spent? Yes. 8 billion on the two bridges on the medical equipments which I handed directly over to the governors, to the governors. I did not pay for the drips and all of those ones that had expired. In fact, the governor of Edo State nearly rejected some of the medical equipment. And I want to say this, and it's very, very important. I submitted that to you. This payment of, for, the, for the medical equipment, Mr. Chair, Go on, please. Please go on. The payment for the medicals. Senator Akpabio and I've sent you that. And we have at the commission minutes of our uh, management meeting. He had asked that I use those equipment that I installed. Cairo says that I did it. None of them knew. I was not responsible for the warehouses. The warehouses are under the... EDFA, which is admin. Now, Senator Aquabio says, go and get a contract. Get a contract, five billion, five billion. I say, sir, I cannot do that contract. We have those things in store. Why would I award any other contract for the five billion? The whole idea was to use this as part of that contract. I have the documents. When we held the, meet, the management meeting, we wanted him to write it himself because he wanted me to award a contract for what is in the store. How can I award contract for what we have in store? I said I will not. So we held a management meeting where we all agreed that is over our, my threshold. So, Madam, you will write to Senator Akpabio himself. Let him write to us to award this emergency contract. We wrote to him. I've submitted it to you also. We wrote to him, no reply, because he doesn't write anything for you. You can imagine if I was a very good MD and I obeyed him and used what is in store for that. So I only spent eight billion. Okay. I'm uh, happy that you have the CPN uh, payment. Dr. And, Joy, uh, you spoke about a uh, certain amount of money in the dollars account before you left, that you did not change the money from the do, uh, NDDC's um, uh, account to Naira before you left. Can you tell this committee how much precise, how much did you leave in uh, uh, the dollar account before you left? How much did you have? I, since I'm under oath, I do not want to be specific because honestly, it's, um, it's in the um, documents that you're going to have. I don't want to say anything that will put me in disrepute, that I said this, the whole world is watching. I cannot be specific. However, I want to tell the whole world that I, I did not touch two naira, two dollar, one dollar. Okay, that is, that is well noted. <laughs> then, what is, did you spend, did you pay any money for the forensic during your tenure? Sorry? Did you pay any money for the forensic audit during your tenure? I did not pay any money for the forensic audit because from my time there has been no forensic audit till today. I did not pay one naira for the forensic audit. Okay. One Dr. naira Dr. Joy, be paid by me for the Dr. Joy, audit. you spoke about the verification exercise that was carried out. How much did the verific verification exercise cost the commission under your leadership? I do not know. The only thing that was paid out was accommodation for the people. The 
Did you engage consultants? Did you yeah, engage I, I, I cannot. No, I, I, I cannot say. No, did you engage consultants for the purpose of the world? No, 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 no consultants. The only people that went with us were the police and the DSS. And the DSS gave their reports because we wanted to make sure that even our staff did not compromise. Okay, did you? And after that, the DSS, I did not engage any consultants to carry out the verification activity. Okay. Um, there is this allegation from some of the submissions that we have and in the media and from some stakeholders that any payment that uh, you made or NDDC made, that 20% must be collected from the contractors. Is there any face to that? I cannot um, say that. I will not say that any payment that was made by me, um, Senator Fabio, collected. No, no, no. I mean you. You have been alleged. No, not, not Senator Fabio. You as oh. Dr. Joy Nune, that for okay. contractors that were paid, 20% were remitted back to you as kickback. How true is that? It's not possible. If I wanted, it's not, it did not happen. No contractor gave me 20%. And I want to say this. If I was interested in making money, I was doing a renovation in my house. Contractors came up with all kinds of furniture. Versace, they wanted to buy for me. I didn't. In fact, Senator Aquebio said that I have demystified the position of MD because I personally used to go to the building materials uh, market myself <laughs> to go to buy. I did not take 10 naira from any of those contractors. As for those ones, everybody talks about um, 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 those ones for the medical equipment. It's important to tell you why I even agreed to pay those people. Now, when we went to the warehouses and found out that some of those things in the warehouses had expired, we had emergency boots that were warehouses for like 10 years. Boots. We had trucks. I insisted that these things should be distributed in the ninth state. These contractors now stopped us on our way to Imo State. And, um, um, the governor of Imo was um, um, Emeka Ihedio. They stopped us that morning from distributing. We are giving the one for River State. We are giving the one for Abia. When we were going in there, these contractors, I only know one of the contractors. I only know only one of those contractors. All the other contracts that were paid, I've never seen okay. them in Do my Dr. life. Dr. Joy, that is, well, that is well noted. Finally, finally, Dr. Joy, as a former acting managing director of NDDC and a testifier before this committee, what are your recommendations to this committee for the way forward of NDDC? Well, firstly, I would like to see the forensic audit really take place. It's something to me. I would like you to recommend to Mr. President that we write in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution to Mr. President, um, to, sorry, the Auditor General, to give you a list of certified forensic auditors in Nigeria um, so that we can get them quickly to carry out a proper forensic audit of the NDDC. And mind you, the audit is not just financial. It's supposed to look through the personnel, because in NDDC, I found out that for a commission that is involved in structural things like roads and all of that, they didn't have enough engineers. I don't know if they had more than 10 certified engineers. It's unbelievable where we're talking about billions of Naira being spent. We didn't have that. So we have to look at a staff audit as well. It's very important. The staff audit to put square hole, square peg into square holes. Secondly, my recommendation is that Mr. President should please ask or direct the immediate establishment of the National Procurement Council, mm -hmm. emergency. That, that is the first thing, even before we talk about the forensic audits. 
that could help Nigeria save so much money in terms of fraud and corruption in its ministries or commissions. I believe that the Minister of Finance is very well qualified and the Attorney General, I know him personally, he is very, very qualified and I know that if we do that, we would save at least out of the 60% that goes into procurement fraud, um, 60 Kobo, we might be able to save 40, you know, Kobo from all of that. So that is very important. Three. The National Assembly has a role to play. It has this role to play. Your oversight functions would have to be, um, you have to help the new management that would come in. You need to supervise them and make sure they act only in accordance with the laws. i give you an example. To Senator Akwadio, he felt that the president had delegated all his powers in the NDDC Act to him, which wasn't true. The president only delegated one power, which is over policy. But he felt that he also had the power of the board. You heard him at, at the, at the, uh, on a rise saying most of these um, directors that he removed, they, they are very lucky. They are still there. They are paying them even if they are on leave. The question is, on what basis did the lead consultant write or send those directors on leave or on, um, on compulsory retirement based on what report, since there's no forensic auditor? Is the consultant or the minister, do they have the powers for, for, for directors over level 14 to send them on leave or take any disciplinary action against them? The only power to promote over level 14 lies with the Civil Service Commission, the chairman. So we need you, the, the committee, has to make sure that anywhere that this, the, 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 the minister supervising, or it must be in accordance with the act. There must be a reorientation for the minister for supervising. We didn't really have this sort of problem from the records that I saw when the NDDC was under the office of the SGF. Because he knew that this was the, was the right thing to do. My recommendation would honestly be that the NDDC be taken back to the office of the SGF. Because the SGF is very, very busy. He won't go out of his way to start looking for NDDC money. But what we see here is that for Senator Akwadi, who has been governor, he still has in his head that you, he's still a governor, you just do this, you just do that. His, his budget is like 20 billion. How do you want him to service, uh, a, 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 to supervise um, a commission that is talking about hundreds of billions? It, 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 it can't work again. So we need to look at all of those things. And but what happened yesterday, just for you to help to raise this issue, when I was brought in to NDDC, and at NDDC, I want to make this clear, Senator Akwabio, when he saw that I was not cooperating, refused for them to give me an official vehicle. I want to say before Nigerians, I didn't have an official vehicle. When I first came in, there were two bulletproof cars that I was using. On one of my trips to Abuja, and this is for my security, that's what I'm saying. Um, a gentleman met me at the airport, said, oh, Madam, you don't know me. I said, no, I said, I'm one of your contractors. I said, how are you? And he said, I'm the one that gave you the car that you are using. I said, what? Using a contractor's car? And I'm supposed to pretend over a forensic audit? I called Senator Fabio. I said, sir, you won't believe that that car that I'm using, I thought it was from the commission that it belongs to so-so and so. He said, no, don't worry, the man is a very good man. I asked him to, I just kept quiet. When I got back to Potter, I returned the car. The second car to this day from another contractor is still at the mechanics. In fact, after what happened yesterday, I've asked them to go and collect it so that I can keep it safely in case they ask and they don't say because I wrecked the car. I returned both cars. Now, the police, 
that were my um, police audience, they were sent or um, they were sent to my office by Akwabio's former ADC when he was governor of Akwaibom State. I didn't know that. So if I went to Peter's house, if it's a perceived enemy of Senator Akwabio, he will be told that I am right now in Peter's house. I give you an example. I went to see Mrs. Silva, who has been my longtime friend for over 20 years. Senator Akwabio said, yes, you went to see Senator, um, you went to see Mrs. Silva. Do you know the husband said this at first and that, that, that? You must not go there again. <laughs> I was at the airport. They told me, um, one Dakuku's driver told me that, ah, oh, madam, Mrs. Amechi is inside the airport. I walk in to go and greet Mrs. Amechi. Before I get to the gate, Senator Akwabio calls me, yes, you went to have a meeting with Mrs. Amechi because you want to plan against my presidential. I was being monitored. Now, three of the police people that came yesterday were three that was working with me in NDDC. So what happened yesterday? The NDDC obviously was involved. What would have happened is that they would have taken me away. Since everyone has said they didn't know, I hear they say I'm a criminal. That's why they badged in like that um, to come to, to pick me up. But I'm very grateful. I'm very, very grateful. Because this is the modus operandi that happened in Akwaibom State. So we Nigerians must please speak up because they could have taken me away yesterday. It's just by grace that I'm alive. Uh, so Dr. I'm very Dr. Joy, thank you. Th th thank you very much for your time. Uh, we've taken your testimony. We'll wait for the uh, hard copy of your presentation to enable us to work further on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much.